Good afternoon from St. John's in Marion, Wisconsin. On Sunday, February 26th, we were having some technical difficulties and we decided to record the gospel reading and the message for you to enjoy today. The Holy Gospel of Matthew according the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 11. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, It is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Liberating God, you have called, equipped, and sent us to share your grace, mercy, and peace. Let it be so. Here we are the first Sunday of Lent. What does that mean to you? What does Lent mean to you? We have Advent before the Christmas celebration, and Lent is the season before the celebration of Easter. Advent and Lent have quite a bit in common. Both are about preparation. And we prepare for many things in life. We prepare for the arrival of a new child, for upcoming parties. We prepare for tests in school. We start our services by preparing our hearts and minds. We prepare for the changing weather. We prepare for many things in life. We hear about being prepared in the Bible quite often. According to Google, the word prepare is found 159 times in the Old and New Testaments. That would lead one to believe that getting prepared or being prepared is fairly important. Ways to prepare are as vast as the idea of preparation. Depending upon what we are preparing for, our tasks may vary. We shop, we make lists, we invite, we study, we read. We pray, we go to church, we exercise, we eat, we fast. The list goes on and on. Yet how many of us think about going out into the wilderness to become prepared? Most people would think of being led into the wilderness a negative thing. Most of us would automatically think that going into the wilderness would have less than zero to do with preparation. Well, once again, according to Google, the word wilderness, or reference to wilderness, occurs 300 times in the Bible. The definition of wilderness in the Bible can mean a land without water, a wasteland, an area of wild fields where animals graze, but not used for farming or living. Jesus was in the wilderness many times throughout his rather short life by today's measure. In this particular scripture, he was led there, then taunted and tested by Satan. First, it is important to take note, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. But it was Satan that was waiting there full of temptation for Jesus. Can you even imagine not eating for 40 days? Most of us, myself included, think we will all but waste away from starvation when we are told to fast for 12, 8, or 6 hours before a doctor's appointment. 40 days, talk about hangry, and not a Snickers candy bar to be found. But good old Satan, he cajoled Jesus and said, You must be hungry, and if you are the Son of God, turn those stones into bread. 
Next, Satan took him higher in the rugged wilderness and said to Jesus, Throw yourself down off this high point, and if you truly are the Son of God, the angels will catch you, and you won't even strike your foot on a stone. Then Satan's final taunt was from the very highest of mountaintops, where all kingdoms of the world could be viewed by Jesus and Satan. And Satan said to Jesus, If you fall down and worship me, all this and more will be yours. That had to be tempting. And each temptation Satan offered, Jesus denied. Jesus was able to deny these temptations because he was prepared. Jesus had God and the Holy Spirit. Jesus had God's words and commandments to answer Satan's temptations. Man cannot live by bread alone, but rather by the word of God. Satan is written... Satan, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And finally, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and the angels ministered to Jesus. Meaning Jesus was exhausted from 40 days of fasting and his anguishing battle with Satan. And the angels assisted Jesus back down the mountain out of the wilderness. And so we too can prepare ourselves to battle Satan. We are faced with many moral and ethical choices every day. Some days it's just easier, quicker to give in to temptation. And on the days we give in, we eventually regret or agonize over that decision. But this scripture is telling us to prepare ourselves by allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us to allow Jesus into our hearts and minds, then we also can speak God's words and commands in the face of temptation. And truthfully, we don't need to have scriptures memorized or be able to speak eloquently. All we need to know is the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer. That one prayer will give you all the courage and wisdom and strength you will need to tell Satan, Be gone. We like to put undue pressure on ourselves to know everything, to always be good, to make the right decisions, etc. And then we step out of the light of Christ and we then feel we are wandering for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. And that is where we get the idea that the wilderness is bad or a punishment. When truly the wilderness is a good thing. Yes, many times we try to lead ourselves out of the wilderness, moments of our lives when all we do is make the way for Satan easier. Being in the wilderness is a time of preparation. Translated from Hebrew, wilderness means to speak. Now let that sink in a little. Wilderness means to speak. God sent Jesus and Moses and John the Baptist into the wilderness. God brought the Israelites into the wilderness. Why? Why the wilderness? Because God wanted to speak to them. God wanted to tell them all of his plans for them. God wanted to have their undivided attention to speak to them. No wonder so many people go out into nature into the wilderness to encounter God, to listen to God speak to them. It's not always about brick and mortar. Sometimes it's fresh air and being out in nature and renewing our relationship with God. There's nothing wrong with speaking to God wherever you are. The brick and mortar is encouraged to build communion or community with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ a place to gather and receive the sacraments as one family in Christ Jesus. God is everywhere, all of the time. I have been and am currently in a wilderness part of life. I have been led to the wilderness by Satan, by my own choices and decisions in this life, and I have been led there by the Holy Spirit. Some wilderness moments have lasted hours, days, weeks, months, and years. I walked around in the wilderness of heartache and pain far longer than necessary. 
I have walked in the wilderness of self-doubt and depression far longer than intended. And why? Why do we do this? Why does the wilderness go on so long? I'll tell you why. Because we do not let God speak. We do not want to hear what God has planned for us. We fight tooth and nail and we run away from God, his plans, his word, and we only find ourselves deeper into the wilderness, higher on the mountain of sin, struggling with Satan, our demons, our addictions, our comforts, our sins. And we, like the Israelites, wander for 40 years. And soon life and people and opportunities pass by, and sometimes it leaves us with regret and emptiness, and then our wilderness journey only takes longer. Let God speak. Let God walk you through your wilderness moments, months, years. Let God speak. Let God take you on his path, and you may still find yourself questioning and wandering, but I hope you, I hope we all, can go prepared and equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit. Even if it's tucked in our back pocket, the Holy Spirit will prepare us to do battle with Satan face to face, and we too will be exhausted, and we will be guided back down the mountain and out of the wilderness, assisted by God, the Holy Spirit, and maybe even a few angels will be sent our way. So prepare yourself to let God speak. I'm, as you know, attending lay school, and this is a true wilderness experience. It's bringing me closer to God, deepening my faith, and causing me to really take a look at myself, who I am, who I've been, and who I want to be with each new tomorrow. I'd like to say I'm doing it well and correctly, but in all truthfulness, I'm only trying to let God speak, and I only listen momentarily. I still try to run from his plans and cling to my own, but I am trying, I am changing, and God is speaking. Will you meet God in the wilderness? Are you prepared to battle Satan? Will you welcome the Holy Spirit into your heart? Will you allow Jesus to be the light of your salvation? Here we are, only starting the Lenten season of preparation to the celebration of Easter. 40 minutes, 40 days, 40 years. We never know just how long our wilderness experience might last. We need to let God speak. Let God speak to us and through us, for then we will be preparing for our own death and our own Easter celebration. Let us pray. Dear God, prepare our hearts and minds to walk in the wilderness, to reject Satan and temptation. Allow us to let God speak, that we become prepared for salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>